Thank you so much to Scottish Government and the Autism Network Scotland for inviting me to this rather surreal virtual conference. I'm Cathy Steedman and I'm the National Director for Autism Initiatives in Scotland. We provide a vast range of services, including three one-stop shops, housing support services, including 24-hour support, outreach support and university support. We provide services to around 4,000 autistic adults in Scotland and employ around 400 staff. I was asked to talk about a really exciting pilot project we've been delivering since April 2019, our diagnostic project. As this year's conference is about autism and human rights, we agreed that our diagnostic pilot fitted well. People should be given their access to timely diagnosis. The positives of a diagnosis are clearly known and far reaching from understanding oneself and improving quality of life outcomes to being able to access specialist support and enter the autistic community all leading to improved mental well-being and happiness. It really is a pleasure to be able to share with you some very encouraging results from this pilot project. I'll start by talking about the origins of the project and why we're doing it and, of course, what we're actually doing. Despite it still being very early days, I'll go over some of the outcomes we have already achieved and what the participants have reported. So why was there a need for the project? The Scottish Strategy for Autism acknowledges that good quality diagnosis is a key foundation and calls for clear pathways for assessment and the removal of barriers. However, we all know that there are still significant issues within the diagnostic pathways across Scotland, with many people waiting several years for a diagnosis to be progressed and others being referred out with their local authority area. And of course, people not having access to diagnosis at all. There remains a postcode lottery across Scotland. Services have absolutely improved over the years, but people are still waiting far too long and the mental health services are not resourced to undertake the volume of referrals that are finding their way to them. We wanted to find a way to address this and provide an easy route to diagnosis and reduce waiting times. We also wanted there to be a positive impact to the mental health teams too, reduce their workload to enable them to concentrate on those people with an actual mental illness. Talking to colleagues within mental health teams in Edinburgh, we agreed that we were ideally placed to deliver a pilot project within our one-stop shop model due to the experience we had in delivering one-stop shops since 2005, almost 15 years at the time the pilot started. These included working with thousands of autistic people to support them to receive a diagnosis and providing a huge range of post-diagnostic support and peer support. We had the opportunity to seek three-year funding from the Edinburgh Integrated Joint Board and were fortunate to have our proposal accepted. The project aims are really simple, to work with the Edinburgh mental health teams to offer an accessible route to diagnosis and post-diagnostic support. This would result in reduced waiting times and increased capacity within the Edinburgh mental health teams. We wanted the process itself to be therapeutic. It's not just about saying someone meets the criteria for autism or doesn't, it's about helping the person to gain an understanding of themselves and improve their mental well-being. It really does have benefits for everyone. The success of the project was and is de determined by buy-in from the mental health teams in Edinburgh and the experience and training of the staff who were involved. We are extremely and eternally grateful for the support and co-production of this pilot from Dr Prem Shah. He was integral in liaising with mental health teams and psychiatry to move this from just an idea into an actual autism diagnostic pathway for Edinburgh. We're also grateful to Dr Andrew Stanfield and Dr Chris Chris Mathias, who supported the project and gave his staff additional training in differential diagnoses. Of course, for this project to be successful, we needed the right staff. Staff knowledge and expertise was and is absolutely fundamental, and I'll talk a bit more about this later. Because this is an Edinburgh pilot, it sits within our number six one-stop shop. So, what happens? We really wanted this to be very simple for everyone and we think it is. Firstly, the person seeking a diagnosis visits their GP and is given various screening tools for autism, ADHD, childhood impact and current impact. Once completed, these are sent to the specific mental health teams for their area. These are then discussed at the mental health team's allocation meeting where a decision is made on whether the person should remain with the mental health within the mental health system 
for an assessment or be offered the opportunity to be assessed by number six. The mental health team reached this decision based on a number of factors, including referral information from the, re the GP and previous use of mental health services. Where the person is offered the opportunity to come to number six, it really is absolutely self-selecting. It's totally up to them if they want to come to us or remain with the mental health team. Our assessment process, well, we decided to split the project into two teams of staff who take part in the overall assessment, the data gathering team and the autism assessment team. It is essential that data gathering team have excellent observation skills and have a broad range of skills and experience. All have pre and post diagnostic experience of working with autistic adults. All have run late diagnosis groups and some have lived experiences too. The assessment team must have at least 10 years working experience of supporting autistic adults, as well as experience of working with people with a wide range of conditions and support needs. Their qualifications are broad, including nursing, psychology and postgraduate qualifications in autism. There are five staff in this team who between them have 110 years experience of working with autistic people. So an average of 22 years for each member of staff. They have worked with over 6,000 autistic people in this time. We were really very shocked when we started adding this up and some of us felt very, very old. In addition, they have vast experience within working with people in various health and social care services and with people with a wide range of conditions. Everyone who is in the assessment team has undergone training in ADOS2 and ADIR. We use ADOS2 for individual assessments and observations and the ADIR interview schedule with a reporter, parents, family member, or someone who knows the individual well and for a considerable amount of time. If there is a need for further information that would be beneficial, both teams have the flexibility to call for further meetings or arrange to meet others who know the person well. So what is the process? It's really very simple. When we get a referral, it is given to a member of the data gathering team who contacts the person and arranges to meet with them on three occasions to garner information about them. During the first appointment, we go over the process with the person and answer any of their questions. We discuss why the person is seeking a diagnosis and what their aim is. We then start to elicit a whole range of information from their childhood experiences until present date experiences. After the third data gathering meeting, a member of the assessment team gets involved. They meet with a parent or family member or where that isn't possible, someone who has known them for a long period of time to undertake an ADIR. Once completed, they will meet with the individual to carry out an ADOS assessment. The penultimate part of the process is a meeting between the staff who have now met with the person and a senior member of staff who has not met with them to discuss the findings and the scoring from the ADIR and ADOS. I personally oversee all decision making and these meetings are very in depth with lots of interrogation and justification of views to ensure we have clear evidence of why we think what we do and ensure consensus on the outcome. Where there are concerns or anything other than autism that we want to highlight or discuss, we will raise these with the GP and or the mental health team. And the final part of our process is obviously the feedback meeting where we explain how we have reached our conclusion and give evidence or not under DSM and ICD headings. Where there is evidence to suggest a person, person is on the autism spectrum, we talk about their strengths and start to look at ways to overcome some difficulties. Further problem solving and information giving gives, really does take place during the post-diagnostic appointment and everyone is offered enhanced post-diagnostic meetings and support. So, you now know what we do and why we do it. We do have some results, some statistics from last September when we started to meet people until March this year when we first reported on the project. Although the project officially started in April 2019, a lot of time was spent on perfecting the Edinburgh Autism Pathway and, as I've already said, Dr Prem Shah was instrumental in doing this essential work. It then had to be communicated to all Edinburgh GPs and mental health teams. We met with some GP surgeries to go over the process to make sure it was as clear as possible. We had no idea of how many people would want to come to us 
It could be none or everyone seeking an autism diagnosis in Edinburgh. Between September to March 2020, 57 people self-selected to come to us. We met with them at least three times and where possible met with a family member to complete an ADIR. We met with 44 relatives or someone who knew the person well. Where this wasn't possible, we sought additional information from the person. From the 57 people we first met, 47 met the criteria for autism spectrum in DSM-5 and Asperger syndrome in ICD-10. The high percentage of positives are due to the high level of screening that takes place. Participants only come to number six following review from mental health teams. The way we deliver this project also means people generally stay to the end. That is, the three one-to-one -one meetings, keeping to same rooms where possible, and meeting the person at a time that suits them, often out with regular office hours. It means there are as few barriers to completing the process as possible. We can also follow up on people that contact us, but then don't respond to our subsequent calls or emails. This has happened on eight occasions, but by trying them a few times, they did end up participating. We didn't want people to get lost just because they didn't answer a call or respond to a letter. Out of the, the people we met during the first seven months of this project, we met who met the criteria for autism, 49% were female, 48% were male and 3% were non-binary. The average age was 35 years. We have a whole range of data on top of this, which is useful when talking to individual mental health teams and individual GP practices. We can really break down the data into very specific levels. So how long does it take? The response time is also a key element to the success of this project. As soon as a person contacts us, we can make an appointment to meet them and start the process. We have a very efficient system in place, which has resulted in no waiting times at all. On average, it takes 15 days from us receiving the referral to the first appointment with the individual. People don't need to wait long periods of time and the appointments are agreed and arranged to suit them. So it's rare that we have people not turning up for their appointment. The three appointments are spaced according to need as well. Some people prefer these to happen weekly, while others prefer a longer gap between them. From meeting the person to agreeing the outcome of the team, it takes an average of 40 days. And it takes an average of 55 days from the referral being received from us, received by us rather, to discussing the outcome with the individual. I think this is really impressive, especially considering we're talking about at least seven meetings taking place within this space of time. Some of the outliers, the longer time frames, were due to initial systems of communicating via letters rather than emails or telephone. And this was at the start due to NHS protocols. We also had people going on holiday and sadly, some people experienced bereavements as well. The evaluation. Well, it's imperative that the people taking part in this project find it a positive and valuable experience. We need to ensure it meets its aims. We need to make sure we did what we said we would do. We ascertain this in a variety of ways, including keeping a wide range of statistics, feedback from the mental health teams and direct feedback from those who took part through questionnaires shortly after diagnosis and six months following diagnosis. When asked, 95% of respondents rated the service 10 out of 10 and 100% said that the service was accessible. Feedback stated that the project was accessible in terms of the physical and interpersonal environment and also the times of the appointments. We were lucky to have the flexibility to be able to work outside the typical 9 to 5 Monday to Friday. 18.5% of appointments with individuals for diagnostic assessments have come out with that Monday to Friday um, time frame and 20% of appointments with family members have come outside typical office hours as well. Everyone who is autistic has access to specific post-diagnostic support and the majority of people take this up. However, some don't and that's fine. We're here when people want or need us and there isn't a time limit to taking support. It is important to note that those who don't meet the criteria for autism are also met with. We talk to them about the next steps for them and we have received positive feedback from them too.
And six months post-diagnosis, we know an autism diagnosis can be critical in promoting mental well-being. And although we recognise that it can be a huge relief to people at the time of diagnosis and shortly afterwards, we want to know if this improvement to people's life can be sustained. What, if anything, has been the medium term impact of the diagnostic process and the diagnostic support? We therefore asked about any impact six months from diagnosis and a lot of themes emerged, including feeling less isolated and less lonely, having more opportunities for social connectedness and peer support. People felt more confident, they understood autism more and understood themselves more and general improvements in mental health. And in respect to ser special services, they have access to them and can now use them. This is probably the slide you've all been waiting for for the last 10 minutes, the final one. Well, it's almost the final one. We are so grateful, so extremely grateful for being able to provide this pilot project and being in a unique position to be able to deliver it due to the wealth of staff experience and expertise and our one-stop shop model which we've been delivering for over 15 years. I really must take this opportunity to thank Matthew Day and his team who, due to their amazing knowledge, skills and commitment, have made this whole project possible. From the evidence we already have, it is clear that the pilot has been highly successful and I hope this continues until the end of the pilot and beyond. I'm going to leave you with some quotes from the people who've taken part. I think they sum up the project perfectly. I somehow feel more at peace with myself. I would wholeheartedly recommend number six to anyone who suspects they're autistic and have decided to seek help. I felt comfortable throughout in what would usually be a very anxiety provoking situation for me. This whole, this alone was quite positive. I also felt I was able to explore various parts of myself and I had that I hadn't really thought about or been aware of before. After years and years, I finally understand why I am who I am and I now have a better understanding of myself. And finally, this really is the last thing. One participant stated, the diagnostic service has led to probably the most significant change in my entire life. It's hard to put that into words. It's affected everything for the better, everything. Thank you so much for your time.